Cat is the new head of household, but will prank or no prank change her plans? Find out now on Big Brother Cheesecake for Office Wars. Hello, I'm Andrew Shevsik Moonbez. Welcome to Big Brother Cheesecake for Office Wars. It's day 17 inside the Big Brother Cheesecake house, and this week, Kat from Accounting is the head of household, which means the accountants, Brazil, Ryan, and Brandon, are in power and safe for the week. Uh, who will Kat nominate for eviction? We'll find out tomorrow. And who? what will happen as we play prank or no prank? We'll find out shortly. But first... Some quick announcements. So Lisa was evicted yesterday, and she did not go quietly. Uh, she did post quite a long goodbye message, and I'm not going to read it all. But at the end, she did say this. Ryan, I know you're the mole. Who else would be chosen? You've been playing for 20 years and will be ruthless at rising to the top. Okay, everyone evict Ryan. So Lisa clearly kind of threw Ryan under the bus and told everyone to evict Ryan, and, well, we'll see how that pans out. Ashley then... Oh, and before I get to Ashley, um, there was some drama in the public forum, uh, which you can all... It's all out there in the open between Chad and Lisa. Um, I, w I was going to read out the, the, the discussion, but you know what? Lisa's out of the game. Chad was never in the game, so I'm not going to read it out. But I will say that what happened was Chad wrote the original draft of the roast for Lisa and Chad sent it to the mole and I. The mole and I looked it over and made revisions, some serious revisions, and we made a second draft. Then Lisa did message me the night before and said, I hope it's not, the roast is not too mean, uh, if it's, you know, I don't want it to be derogatory or offensive and whatnot. And so I was like, okay, so I assured Lisa was not going to be, was not going to cross the line, and I made another, I watered it down more, and I made another draft. So the draft that made it to the episode was the third draft. And sure enough, as soon as it's done, Lisa said, Lisa laughs it off and says, is that the best you got? That was, the mole is a loser, that was dumb, or something to that effect. And I'm like, I just watered it down for you because you thought, you made me think you were going to be super sensitive, and now you're saying the mole wasn't mean enough. So I was like, oh, no, no, no. but it's it's all good. That's what Chad was upset about, though, was that, um, and he they kind of referenced this, that, that his original draft didn't make it on and that she was sort of laughing at what was originally his document. But you know what? It's in the past now. Let's move on. Uh, so Ashley then, and Curtis did make a comment about how Chad sees, seems a, like a bit of, bit of a piece of work. And yes, yes, that's correct. So Ashley came out of the closet, not that closet, and she said, Well, now it's the beginning of week three, and I think it's time I come clean. Most of you know already, but it's time you all know. I played in season two. I was afraid of telling anyone because then everyone would think I'm the mole. And if I didn't say anything and people found out, they would think I'm the mole. So I felt like I was in a tough position. P.S. I'm not the mole, but Ryan is. So yes, Ashley is a returnee. She played in season two. She was the runner-up. What happened was I had somebody, this happens every year, I had somebody like 24 hours before cast reveal bail on me. And so I was like, frig. And, and because of the pandemic, I couldn't just go onto the street and pick some random person. So I went to my list. I had six returnees that wanted to play that were alternates. And Ashley was the first on the list. And also I wanted her to play because... Uh, next season is All-Stars, but Ashley's from season two, the best season, and she did not qualify for All-Stars, so she's going to kill me for saying that, but I, so I wanted to give her a second chance. Now, seasons one, three, and four have been very Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and season two was dragons everywhere, dragons, dragons! It was just intense, and so, uh, unfortunately, Ashley, I mean, 
you know, Ashley, the, the cycles you were on with that season. I mean, does it surprise you you didn't make the list? But anyway, uh, she was in the mix, but yeah, she didn't qualify. So that's why Ashley came in at the last minute. And thank you for saving me, Ashley. Um, yeah. So I think that's everything. Oh, and the last thing I wanted to say real quick before we get to prank or no prank is that Kat won the Big Brother election with eight votes. And I, oh, sorry, I have to clarify. It was not eight to four to one. I made a mistake. Jack uh, forgot to vote. And I think because he was not voting as a nominee in the eviction, it just, you know, he just forgot. It's okay. So Jack did not vote. And Lisa's vote was not supposed to count because she was evicted. So it was actually... Eight to three to one. Does that add up? Yes. So CJ got one, Ashley three, Cat eight. Um, what's interesting is Cat got eight votes, and he, if we assume that all of the counting voted for her, that means Cat got five votes outside of her department, which is pretty impressive because Jonathan won the election last season with eight votes, but there were no departments. This season, Cat was able to get five people outside of her group to vote for her. So that's pretty impressive, but now it's a matter of can she have a smooth HOH and make this work into her favor? Um, because as you know, there is a curse that the first four HOHs in Big Brother Cheesecake history have never won. So I think Curtis and Nick both had smooth HOHs, and so we'll see what happens now. So they could very much break the curse. Uh, yeah, okay, now it's time to get to prank or no prank. Uh, this time around, people were a little more, uh, they were willing to gamble a bit more, and eight out of the 11 house guests remaining, um, were, did say yes. The three that said no, I sent the messages going, buck, 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 buck. Uh, and they all pretty much said they were just afraid of the Pooh Brown veto. Uh, yeah, okay. So, it's time to play Prank. Or no prank. This is so exciting! Okay, so Nick, Megan, and Brenda have already been tempted, so they're not in the draw. Ryan may or may not be in the draw. He has prank protection for four weeks. This is week one. Uh, if his name is drawn, that means obviously he picked a no prank. If his name is. If he picked a prank, that means he's not in this battle. Okay, here we go. Stakes are high, and they get higher every single week. And I saw one of the names by accident, so I have to reshuffle. Okay. Here we go. Let's go with... You ready? I think I see what it is. Yup. Ryan. Which means, if you read between the lines, Ryan picked something good. He has a no prank. Uh, fun fact, Ryan obviously elected to play. He picked Blueberry. He had picked Blueberry in weeks one and two, which means the prank protection didn't really actually help him at all, but good to know you threw a veto away for <laughs> prank protection. Oh well. Okay, so, Ryan is about to get something good. Here we have... So, oh, I want to make sure it's in the shot, because there we go. Okay. And I'm not going to reveal who, or should I? Yeah, I don't think it really affects the game. CJ's about to be pissed because she also picked Blueberry. And, you know, it's just, that's just luck of the draw that Ryan's name was picked. CJ also picked Blueberry. So, because she probably thinks blueberry goes good with vodka. Anyway, okay. Here we go. Okay. This is one of the ones I did not set. You were all grossed out by me drinking it. I mean, it's just water and sugar. Let's see if this, but mind you, the apricot one tasted terrible. Hoping for that blue raspberry slushy, you know, the icy one. It's not. Getting worse. You know what? 
think I can get it out without finishing it. It's not actually you no know, it's not bad. It grows on you. It's an acquired taste. Or as I'm getting lower, the sugar which sinks to the bottom. That's what it is. Science. See? <laughs> Thank you, Bill Nye. Yep, getting sweet. Ours a sugary brine. And you have won. You gotta be kidding me. There we go. You have won. best of the no pranks because you have won a promotion. Ryan, you have won the Big Brother promotion. Dave Wallace came in from, uh, I don't know, uh, New York from corporate and since Michael Scott has left the office, you have been promoted to manager. Now what this means in the game of Big Brother is you have been promoted to the jury house. This means you cannot be nominated or evicted until at least the final nine. Uh, this is by far the best of the prizes that was available. It was won by Jimbo in season two. I didn't have it last year. It was won by Jimbo in season two, but he won it, uh, I believe, the second last week before jury... And the Hufflepuffs were in power for both those weeks, so it didn't end up, and he was in Hufflepuff, so it didn't really help him at all. And technically this week you don't need it because you're safe anyway, but you are going to potentially need it in the coming weeks. Um, what's interesting, too, is uh, every good thing you can get in Prank or No Prank has a bad side. Every bad thing you can get in Prank or No Prank has a good side. Even the Pooh Brown Veto Nicole used to help get sympathy and love from people in the house. The only negative thing to this is I got this idea from, and if you're a Big Brother Canada fan, you know exactly what's coming. I got this idea from Netta getting the stupid vote, which was unfair, but getting voted to get a free pass to jury. And this is exactly where I got the idea from. And we all saw what happened to Netta once she got to that point and her safety expired, she was the next to go within a double eviction. So... Yeah, you're safe till the final nine, but are you going to use these weeks to your advantage, or are you going to let, are you going to let the safety get to your head? Also, I know what a lot of you are saying right now. You're saying this shit is rigged. Ryan was the person you cast from Big Brother Canada, and you said you just put this in. You, this is like Paul's pendant of protection that he got to get all the way to thing. Blah 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 blah. One, this twist was decided on before Ryan was cast. Two, I've had this before in season two, so you can't even say that I just made this up out of thin air. Um, Ryan had to say yes, had to pick Blueberry, and his name had to be drawn, all of which required complete random dumb luck that he picked the right one and he picked, and his name got picked this week and not when we already got to jury. Um, so yeah, it was not rigged. So for you conspiracy theorists, and I can already see Chad. Chad is saying this whole thing is rigged. Jeffrey's a cheater. Lisa's a cheater. Everybody's a cheater. No, it wasn't rigged. Congratulations, Ryan. You have been promoted to the jury house, and you cannot be nominated or evicted until the final nine. With that said, who will Cat nominate for eviction? And who will we pick to play in the Golden Power Veto Competition? Find out tomorrow. Saturday, we have the rules to the Golden Power Veto Competition. A brand new competition that is going to be so much fun, I assure you. Sunday is the Golden Power Veto Rules. Monday, or excuse me, Sunday, Veto Results. Monday, the Golden Power Veto Ceremony. Tuesday, the final two nominees plead their case. And we learn the rules to the next head of household competition. And Wednesday, another house guest will be uh, fired from Dunder Mifflin, evicted from the Big Brother Cheesecake 4 House, and lose their shot at the $400 Cheesecake Factory gift card. Uh, yeah, so CJ, and CJ did pick Blueberry, 
as well. That's just bad luck. I'm sorry, CJ. I'm Andrew Chef Sigmund Best. Take care. We'll leave you as we eavesdrop on the house guests. Good night.